Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowledge inflates with pride, but love builds up. If anyone supposes he knows something, he does not know as he ought to know. But if one loves God, one is known by him. So about the eating of meat sacrificed to idols, we know that there is no idol in the world and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are so-called gods in heaven and on earth, there are, to be sure, many gods and many lords. Yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are and through whom we exist. But not all have this knowledge. There are some who have been so used to idolatry up until now that when they eat meat sacrificed to idols, their conscience, which is weak, is defiled. Thus, through your knowledge, the weak person is brought to destruction, the brother for whom Christ died. When you sin in this way against your brothers and wound their consciences, weak as they are, you are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again so that I may not cause my brother to sin. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O oh Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways, you are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Truly, you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Probe me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if my way is crooked, and lead me in the way of old. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Alleluia, alleluia. If we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, you, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. 
And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them, and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as also your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will, in return, be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel passage is from Luke's Gospel called the Sermon on the Plain. We remember probably and are more familiar with the Sermon on the Mount, which is in Matthew's Gospel. The two are very similar. They were given, or they were, the account is given after Jesus has begun his public ministry. He has called his disciples. He has been going around and he's been doing a lot of healing. And as he's been doing a lot of healing, he's becoming more and more well-known. So more and more people are starting to follow him. So now there are crowds that follow Jesus wherever he goes, listening to what he is saying, but also anticipating that uh, he will work these miracles, these healings. When we get to the Sermon of the Plain or the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus begins to teach the people. And that's where we are today. Today's Gospel is a part of that Sermon on the Plain. And you know, the Gospels that we started with yesterday, and will go through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, really gives us the entire Sermon on the Plain in Luke's Gospel. So it would be well for us to, to listen to, those, to, to the complete Sermon on the Plain, and it wouldn't even be a bad idea to go back and read it, it, it um, in its entirety. In today's Gospel, we see a list of, of points that, that Jesus is, being teaching, is teaching. We hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you, do to others as you would have them do to you, be merciful, stop judging, stop condemning, forgive. A lot of things, a lot of things to consider in Jesus' Sermon on the Plain. But I think one of the important things, the most important things on the Sermon on the Plain, and incidentally, it's also in the Sermon on the Mount, is what happens at the very end. Uh, And I want to read that to you, what what Jesus will say. He will say, I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, listens to my words, and acts on them. That one is like a person building, building a house who has dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the river burst against that house but couldn't shake it because it had been well built. But the one who listens and does not act is like a person who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, it collapsed at once and was completely destroyed. That's how Jesus ends his Sermon on the Plain, how he ends his his teaching episode. And it's important that we remember it. Jesus tells us that to come to him and listen to what he says is not enough. We do come to be in Jesus' present here at this liturgy. The Gospels, what a gift the Gospels are. The Gospels include Jesus' words, Jesus' teaching, so we do read and listen to what he says. But we must do something more. We must act on it. The gift of the Gospels that we receive, and there are places, as we know, where you cannot hear the Gospel. You can't have that proclaimed to you. Uh, the, go- the Gospels that we received is a gift, and it's a gift to be shared. It's what Jesus says and what Jesus t- does. It's a gift to be acted on. You know, we're reminded of that responsibility at the dismissal rite in Mass, where we will hear, 
Go forth, the Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. All of those things tell us as we ending, are ending the Mass to go out, to take what we have learned and to spread it and to share it uh, with others. You know, in the rite of ordination for a deacon, whether it's a permanent deacon, such as I am, or a transitional deacon, which is for uh, the man that is going to be ordained to the priesthood, in that ordination rite for the deacon, uh, the, the bishop hands us the book of the Gospels. He holds one end of it, we hold the other end of it. And he says, receive the Gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. That's not a bad instruction for each one of us. Receive, believe, teach, and to practice. That's a good road map for us as we do our part in establishing, establishing and, and growing God's kingdom on earth. Receive, believe, to teach, and to practice. By doing that, if we can do that, we are then building our foundation, uh, the foundation of our house. It, too, will be well-built. Well-built not, not only for us individually, but all those that um, depend on us, our children, our grandchildren, really anybody that watches us as we continue through our journey. So while today's gospel, a part of uh, Luke's, sermon on the, or Luke's account of the Sermon on the Plain, while we list a whole bunch of things that Jesus uh, was teaching the people and teaching us, uh, I think it's important to remember the last part of it, where Jesus is saying, you come to me, you listen to me, but really you must do more than that. You must act on what you've heard. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel does the same thing. Jesus does the teaching. At the end, he says, but you must do more. You can't simply come and listen you also have to act. So as we continue today and go on with our days, let us remember the responsibility, but also the opportunity that we have to be a, a part of that formation of God's kingdom by acting on the things that we uh, listen to and believe. Brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from God, let us ask him to prompt us in prayer, in prayers that are worthy of his hearing. For Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here in this sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In distributing communion, I will start with this section here, and I will just go around to each section uh, as we do during the, the weekend Mass.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.